Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be dealing with a trigonometric value. So we're given that tangent 35 degrees equals x, and we are supposed to find tangent 65 degrees in terms of x, even though the question doesn't explicitly, explicitly state that, that's what is meant by this. So, I know what you're thinking at this point, and I'm going to talk about it, but I'm also going to talk about something else. And then we'll put those two things together and take a look at an interesting graph. Where does the graph come from? You'll see in a little bit. Okay, let's get started. So let's start with the obvious first. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking 35 plus 30. By the way, from now on, I'm not going to write the degree symbol. If you have been watching my trigonometry videos for a long time, you probably already know that I don't like writing the degree symbol. I hope you don't mind. I mean, it's no offense. I just don't like writing it over and over. It's as long as it's understood, right? So tangent 65 degrees, right, even though I don't write it, can be written as tangent 35 plus 30. That's kind of like the, the obvious, the obvious solution, right? Like, is there another way, way to do it? We'll, we'll see. So, and this just becomes tangent 35 degrees plus tangent 30 divided by one minus using the sum formula for tangent. This kind of looks like too easy, too obvious, right? But let's go ahead and work it out. Tangent 35 is given as x, so I can just go ahead and plug it in. And tangent 30 happens to be 1 over square root of 3, or you can write it as root 3 over 3. And the same thing at the bottom, you get uh, x times root 3 over 3. Awesome. Is that the answer? Let's simplify a little bit. Uh, make a common denominator. You get 3x plus root 3. And at the bottom, you get 3 minus root 3x. Okay, that was easy. But we're going to take it to another level. And here's what we're going to do. Tangent 35 is given as x, right? That's in degrees. No doubt about it. And from here, I, I would like to do the following. And I'm going to explain the motivation behind this. Like, how did I come up with this? I'll explain that. So I'm going to double the angle. And you might be asking, like, why? You'll see. When I double the angle, you know, there is a double angle formula. If tangent 35 is x, tangent 70 is going to be 2x divided by 1 minus x squared, which is a very important formula if you're doing trigonometry. And then, now my goal is to get to 65, but I'm going to use 70 as a stepping stone because tangent 65, again in degrees, can be written as tangent of 135 minus 70. Isn't that cool? 135 is a special angle. We know the value, hopefully. Now we can use the formula, the difference formula, tangent 135 minus tangent 70. Again, all the angles are in degrees. Don't get me wrong, they're not in radians. And this is what I get. So tangent 65 should equal this, but what is this, right? I know what tangent 70 is, but do I know tangent 135? Hopefully we do. Well, it is kind of like the reflection of 45 degrees. If you think about the unit circle, you should know your unit circle, right? If you're doing trigonometry, yeah, that is super duper important. And notice that 135 is in the second quadrant. Therefore, its tangent value is going to be negative. And tangent, you can kind of find from this axis, you know, you can expand it, extend it, whatever, and you'll get that it's negative one. So to keep a long story short, tangent 135 degrees is equal to negative one. So from here, tangent 65 becomes tangent 135, which is negative 1, minus tangent 70, which we found from tangent 35 as 2x over 1 minus x squared. That is divided by 1 plus negative 1. So I'm just going to write it as a minus sign. And tangent 70 is 2x over 1 minus x squared. Awesome. This is another value for tangent 65, which is different from what we found first. Let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. I'd like to negate the top and the bottom at the same time. So it's going to look like this. 1 plus 2x over 1 minus x squared. And then just switch the bottom like this. So that everything looks more positive this way. And by making a common denominator, I get 1 minus x squared. Or just multiply the top and the bottom by 1 minus x squared, which is a little easier. Uh, which is the same thing, by the way. But anyways, 2x minus 1 plus x squared. 
Of course, you can write in, in the standard notation, so on and so forth, but let's go back and take a look at the first value we found. Like, so we found something for tangent 65. Is that wrong? No, it is correct. But this is also correct. So there is more than one way to write tangent 65 in terms of x. And again, as I promised earlier, I'm going to explain why this works. Let's go ahead and copy the other value of tangent 65 here and uh, see what we can do with this one. So 3x plus root 3 over 3 minus root 3x. Since they represent the same value, they are equal. And guess what? From here, we get a cubic equation. And I'll show you what the cubic e equation looks like. But first of all, let me explain why this works. Why did we get two different answers for tangent 65? Even though they're both in terms of x, they are different values. So let's say you are taking a test and both of these are answers. No, it's not going to happen. Okay. But both of these are valid answers. Let's see why this works. So suppose alpha equals 35 degrees. Then if you check alpha plus 30, you get 65. And if you check 2, oops, I was supposed to write 135 first. If you check 135 minus 2 alpha, you also get 65. So for alpha equals 35, this, uh, these uh, give you the same value because if you set them equal to each other and solve for alpha, you're going to get 3 alpha equals 105 and alpha equals 35. So 35 degrees satisfies this equation. Therefore, both of these values are valid and good. Let's go ahead and take a look at the resulting cubic equation uh, that comes from cross multiplying and see what it looks like on the coordinate system. And this is the cubic equation that you get. I just wanted to give it to you. Ready made, square root of 3 minus 3 times the x cubed minus 9 plus 3 root 3 x squared plus 9 minus 3 root 3 x plus 3 plus root 3. A lot of root 3s, obviously, that comes from 30 degrees. And this is a cubic equation which has three x-intercepts. And if you evaluate tangent 35, you're going to see that it's very, very close to 0 0.7. There's a couple zeros after the 7. And that is one of our x-intercepts. Now, here's an interesting question that I want to leave you with. So we kind of got the answer in two different ways, and they're both valid in terms of x. And then by setting them equal to each other, we do get a cubic equation. So that means one of the roots of this cubic equation is tangent 35, right? So x equals tangent 35 here, because you can see on the coordinate system as well that one of the roots is pretty close to 0 0.7. But this cubic equation has three x-intercepts, so... What about the other roots? Do they represent something trigonometric? How are they related? That's something to think about. So I'm going to leave you with those questions. And this brings us to the end of this video. I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and hasta la vista.